What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. I'm glad you decided to stop by the shop here for a few minutes. Uh, this is video number 500. Against all odds, <laughs> I've made it to video 500. Of course, that's not the whole story. Uh, actually, I should have been uh, far past 500 by about, I don't know, 20 or 30 videos by now. But I don't know, about a year ago, I guess. I had to go into my YouTube channel and go through all of my old videos and anything that I thought was too controversial, I had to, to delete that video because YouTube was putting a great amount of pressure on me for older videos where, you know, I talked about uh, the border or I talked about the invasion that's going on in the country right now. I talked about uh, the COVID-19. I talked about the vaccine. I talked about all sorts of stuff. We've been We've been through thick and thin, and I want to say first and foremost, uh, thank you guys to the subscribers that have been around, especially you guys that have been there from the beginning or the early days when I was just getting my feet underneath me and I was trying to figure out how to work the camera and, you know, all this stuff, and I've learned a lot along the way. Uh, one of the main things that I've learned is that the censorship is... Uh, pretty well unparalleled, I guess, here on YouTube. Uh, nowhere else do they censor as heavy as they do here on YouTube. And it seems to be very targeted uh, towards one ideology. So if you're conservative, or I guess it's multiple ideologies, but let's just say if you're right of center, anywhere right of center, you're going to have problems on YouTube if you come on here and you talk about politics or you talk about current events. So that's just a tip for you guys that are trying to, you know, get into YouTube. And a lot of people are able to make a career out of it, but uh, I haven't had that level of success and that's fine. Uh, some of that may be my own fault because I do bounce around a lot here on the channel. I'm not, you know, I don't have a singular focus. You know, I do, I, I, I kind of, I kind of just show you guys what's on my mind at that moment, you know, and that changes a lot because, you know, I'm a dynamic person. I think about a lot of different things, you know, and I have a lot of areas of interest and that's been a little difficult because sometimes I think, oh, I should do a video on like the Nephilim or the giants or something like that in the Bible and talk about that sort of stuff because it's very fascinating to me. That whole section of Genesis 6 is very fascinating to me and I've watched a ton of videos on it and I have a lot of opinions, but I think, I think to myself, nah, my audience probably really wouldn't want to hear that. You know, they wouldn't want to, they wouldn't want to know that side of my mind, right? So that's really what this channel has become. In the beginning, I didn't mean for it to be uh, I, I intended it. I intended for the channel to stay apolitical. I didn't want to come off, you know, I, I would do little jabs here and there about the cost of things or about, you know, I would say little, uh, veiled jokes inside of some of my earlier content. Uh, but later on when the COVID stuff came on, I felt like I had to say something. I had to stand up and let other people know that, Hey, you're not alone. You're not the only one that's out there feeling like suddenly you, you woke up in Nazi Germany or something and you have to do all these things and there's all these restrictions and you can't leave your house. And if you do, if you go into a certain place with a, without a mask on, they're going to get you, you know, it's just. It was so over the top Orwellian and the way they did it so instantaneously, you know, and at the time, remember Donald Trump was in, in the office, you know, so he could have done a lot better about stopping the violation of individual liberty. That was the problem that I was running up against. You know, I saw a massive violation of, of my liberties and the bill of rights and my, you know, ability to uh, travel freely to, you know, continue to work, things like that. It was just all upside down. You guys remember. So that's why I started voicing more of my, uh, my political views. You know, a lot of people don't like that. They would just assume me never say anything, but I would argue that those people are leftist communists that are in charge right now that are currently, uh, actively destroying our nation right before our eyes and most people are asleep at the wheel. It's really scary to me and here lately I've had a hard time uh, making political content because I, it sort of feels pointless. You know, it feels like a, you know, you're on red team or blue team type thing and it's just a, it's a way to divide us and, and I'm not saying that there aren't some legitimate 
uh, reasons that I'm a conservative. I consider myself a constitutional conservative and, you know, a strict constructionalist, meaning that the Constitution says what it means, means what it says. There's not this, you know, uh, the leftists, a lot of these modern Marxists, uh, even people that are in the Supreme Court, like Katanji Brown Jackson, they believe that it's open to interpretation. So that you're supposed to, it's a living document, I've heard it been called. It's not a living document. It was written almost in stone. And those words are to, are to be uh, treated as such. They should be treated as, you know, unless we want to go in there and amend the Constitution, then this is the law of the land. It was, it was what our whole system was based upon. But, you know, I see violations so often now direct violations against the Constitution and against the U.S. citizens, and no one is protesting, no one is, you know, raising any hell. Uh, very few people even come on and say what the real problem is. I learned it here on YouTube. There used to be a great uh, YouTube channel called Chris Ann Hall, K-R-I-S-A-N-N-E-H-A-L-L. -L. And you can go check her out on, uh, I think it's chrisannhall.com or something like that. They're, they're still out there and they still post on Facebook and I believe on, uh, maybe on Rumble, but definitely on Facebook. You can still find some of their videos there, but YouTube uh, swatted them down because of the COVID stuff. Now, she had some sort of a background in, I, I believe, it I don't, might not have been virology but it was like some sort of a biology background and she knew about viruses and different things like that she was speaking to it to the things that were going on in that regard right she's speaking at it from a an expert level because part of her uh, college education was about biology and stuff like that human biology right so uh, i thought that was really unfair what they did and i think youtube banned them for a multitude of reasons Chris Ann Hall and her husband J.C. Hall, were, they had a, they had a uh, meaningful impact on talking about uh, the virtues of the Constitution and talking about the things that were, you know, current events and how they line up with the Constitution, right? And so they were very effective at getting their mes message across. And then the COVID happened and the same sort of thing. She felt like she had to say something about this stuff and it got her and her husband banned from YouTube for life. Uh, even though later on we found out that the exact things that she was talking about turned out to be true after enough time went on, at that time it was labeled a conspiracy theory and you were banned from YouTube for saying or suggesting those things. I mean, it got really, really bad during the height of COVID. I mean, I got to the point where I, I probably erased half of the videos that I shot because I would accidentally start talking about, you know, the mandated vaccine or whatever, you know, or the MRNA. And, you know, there's, there are things that we can talk about now, but even now uh, they made me so gun shy that I really don't want to talk about it. And I feel like it's kind of already water under the bridge. I mean, I saw an article two or three days ago that, were, that was showing that, hey, uh, the United States government knew that it came from Wuhan and they tried to hide that fact. I saw an article like, I don't know, two weeks ago now that all of Fauci's emails have now come out. And it turns out Fauci knew about all this stuff and knew that Wuhan had that virus over there and all kinds of really other dirty stuff going back and forth and, and how basically they scripted and sculpted the narrative. Not because it was good for people, but because it, was, it made them look better. It, made the, it gave them power. It gave them control, unprecedented control over the, over the United States populace. It's not in the Constitution that they have the right to do that ever. And never have they done anything like that in the past. In the past, when people were quarantined, it was the sick people that got locked down, not the entire population. So anyway, again, you guys can tell I'm still adamantly pissed off about the way our entire system failed during the COVID. And it was really tyranny. It was a, I think it was a test run, a practice run, a dry run for all out totalitarian communist regime. And... 
Uh, it was quite successful. I'm sure you guys remember many of the people in your own family were probably against you if you had anti-vaccination, anti-government narrative, uh, COVID ideas in your mind. You weren't allowed to speak those. You were probably made to feel like uh, a piece of, you know, dog poo on the bottom of their shoe. And then, you know, enough time goes by and many of those things that we talked about, including the uh, crazy uh, blood clots that these people are finding, the morticians are finding. I mean, many of that stuff is, it's true. And in fact, I just read earlier that AstraZeneca, I believe, it's, I believe was the name of the one, is pulling their production. They're no longer gonna produce the vaccine because apparently uh, in some cases, right? Hear me out, YouTube. In some cases, it causes severe side effects, including blood clots. So uh, again, enough time goes by and you find out that all the stuff people were saying about the clot shot was absolutely true. Now, don't a lot of you feel like you've been duped by your government at this point? I mean, the ones that went down and maybe took, maybe you didn't take all the boosters and all that stuff, but you took the first one because you wanted to keep your job, right? Right? Don't you feel duped? Don't you feel like a, a, a guinea pig, an experimental, you know, one of Fauci's little beagles that he likes to test on? I mean, don't you feel like that? You should, because that's exactly what you are if you went down and took that. <laughs> Potentially, uh, how can I say this? Uh, severe enough side effects that it up to died suddenly, okay? That's a big deal. They killed many of our fellow Americans in the name of trust the science, trust the doctor, right, right, right? I mean, <laughs> I just think about the clown show that that whole experiment was. People coming on night, uh, nightly talk shows uh, dressed up as giant uh, uh, vaccine needles and you know and the COVID and all that remember that or or the nurses doing a little sing-song dance because they were remember they were so busy that they had but they somehow had time to make this little sing-song dance about how you should take the vaccine right my god man that propaganda should have woke everyone up but it didn't it didn't and that's what really really worries me and you know we're already talking about controversial things. So I'll tell you some of the other things that are really heavy on my mind. I've told you time and time again, I'm worried about EMP and we're going to have a lot of video, a lot more videos coming out about how to potentially harden yourself up or your, your property as much as you can and protect yourself against EMP attack. Uh, but I think, you know, as I've said before, it would be like the zombie apocalypse if an EMP went off. So that's something that I think people should be preparing for just in case. Maybe it won't happen, you know, but also uh, the Carrington event of whenever that was, the late 1800s, I think it was the late 1800s, maybe the early 1900s, there was a solar flare. They later on called it the uh, Carrington event. Uh, at that time, all they had was telegraph wires. You know, they didn't have modern telephones. They didn't have modern power or anything like that, or at least not, not a lot of it, right? I would imagine if we did have any power lines, they were probably DC uh, versus AC, you know, uh, direct current versus alternating current. And then that brings up the whole uh, Nikola Tesla, Thomas Edison fight over AC, DC, right? So in that time frame, I believe is when the Carrington event happened and it was just a solar flare. It was just a massive, you know, sun fart right in our general direction. And it supposedly melted the telegraph wires. So you can imagine, I'm sure your state is much like mine. I don't know why they do this, but and I, is, I do know why. It's cheaper to run telephone poles and run the lines and just when they fall down or a limb falls on them, go and replace them. It's cheaper to do that than it is to bury the lines, I suppose. That must be why they do it. Uh, but uh, all out on the main roads around here. And what's weird about it is my line is buried here in my neighborhood, but it's not buried out where we connect in to the, to the main lines, right? And maybe it has something to do with high transmission lines or whatever. You have to have some of those coming in overhead because of the, you know, whatever. It's so powerful. I get it. Maybe there's something like that. If you know more about it, let us know down in the comments. But the point is, is that Carrington event, the solar flare, a natural event, 
wiped out the telegraph system completely. Totally shut it down, melted the wires, okay? So I've been doing a whole lot of research as much as I possibly can, reading until my eyes are bleeding about EMP damages. The problem is, is there's only really two uh, case studies that I can look at. Uh, the, the, I think it was the 1950s or 60s, maybe it was the 60s. Uh, I don't recall, don't quote me on the date, but the Soviets back during the USSR they were testing all kinds of EMPs. They tested more than anyone else on the face of the planet, including the United States. Uh, and so they have a lot of results. I can't remember if that was Kazakhstan or some other, ta other country like that. Uh, Russia was doing all of their tests over that country. And there is a lot of data that I'm trying to go through right now. And as I learn more, my plan is, is to make a presentation here on YouTube where I tell you guys, these are the most likely things that are gonna get fried, and these are the vehicles that'll be okay, or these are, this is how you can protect yourself uh, in the event of an EMP. And that's hard to do, but as you can see, we're in this big metal shop building here, and theoretically, even though my concrete slab is already poured, if I was willing to put up with it, I could run some fencing or something over the top of my slab and connect it to the walls as long as it's complete circuit all the way around. That's my understanding that uh, you are that that provides you a level of EMP shielding. Now, there's probably cracks in my overhead doors and places where air gaps can come in. I don't know how tight it tightly it has to be sealed or anything like that. Uh, but I do know that if you can put things in a metal trash can or a metal cabinet, uh, your electronics will be at least somewhat protected. Depending on how sealed up, sealed up they are, they'll be somewhat protected from EMP. So that's something that I'm going to go do a deep dive on that. I want to make a, it, it may be a longer video because to talk about all this stuff, it's probably going to take 30 to 45 minutes to really hash it all out and talk about just the amount of damage. But some people claim that during those EMP tests that the Russians did, it melted the wires, the windings inside of electric motors. So if you have a generator, and even if you have a spare capacitor and a spare fuse and whatever else common things like that might go bad, if it actually melts the windings, you're not gonna get that generator running. Uh, if it melts the windings in your alternator on your truck or whatever, even if you've got an old classic that's you know a point system that will still run after an EMP with no electronics. It could melt the alternator in the thing, and then it wouldn't charge. It would only run as long as the battery had juice in it. So, and I don't know what it does to batteries. That's a whole other uh, thing that we need to look into. But sadly, there's not a real consensus on the damages. I've watched several uh, videos and presentations where people are talking about. It's really hit and miss. It kind of depends on line of sight more than anything else. So if you're really close to the epicenter of where the EMP goes off, I guess you're gonna probably have a lot higher likelihood that all of your electronics will be wiped out. If you're out, maybe you're behind a hill or something, or you're down in a little valley or something, then there's a chance that none of your modern electronics would be wiped out. Of course, it's going to wipe out the cell phone towers in the same way that it wiped out the telegraph towers back in the day and the lines back in the day. Because those things, even though they're transmitting a signal uh, through the air that you don't see invisibly, they still have tons of wires going up to them. So if it really does melt the windings on motors, it's probably going to melt uh, wires like that as well. So. Uh, I would imagine that's how you're going to know an EMP went off is your power will go off and you know it won't be a stormy day or anything like that and it'll be out of the ordinary and you'll go check your phone to call and report a power outage to your power company and you'll see that your phone is black and you won't be able to power it up. That's a good indication that an EMP has gone off and you need to get your stuff together because uh, things are going to get really, really crazy up to zombie apocalypse levels as far as the way people are acting in the end. So that's something that's really, really high on my uh, radar, on my worry list, things I'm preparing for. The other thing I've been thinking about is doing a whole standalone video about all the different possibilities and all the different ways we could end up in a Civil War 2.0. 
Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty apparent with the election coming up and the way that Democrats are acting, trying to arrest their number one, really the only guy that has a chance of beating them. They're trying to arrest him. And that just reminds me of stuff you would hear of from the old USSR or Venezuela or places like that, right? Third world countries where you're just like, man, of course that's happening over there. Or like in the old Russia, you know, the old USSR. I mean, it was practically an open air gulag everywhere you went over there back in those communist days. But oh yeah, somehow communism is going to work better this time, right? So anyway, we've got so many problems. We got 99 problems and following the constitution ain't one. And so therein lies the problem with our government right now and the way it's out of control. And I really do, you know, I hate to put my faith, I, want, I refuse to put my faith and my hope in one man because, I mean, Trump's fallible as well. You know, he's a human. He's, he's, he's going to make mistakes. He made mistakes in his first term. He's going to make mistakes in his second term if he gets a chance to. So I don't put my faith in one person like that except for Jesus Christ. But... Uh, that being said, I feel like we're at the precipice here. If Trump doesn't win, this experiment in freedom and liberty and self-governance, you know, all that stuff that we like, our founding principles, it will be over if Biden wins again. Even if he doesn't win and they cheat again, which that's another thing I couldn't talk about, you know, six months to a year ago, I couldn't say that Biden stole the 2020 election. Now I can say it, but the question is, do they still shadow ban my video when I do say it? Yes, yes, I'll answer the question. Yes, they do. They shadow ban not only all of my content that I put out, they shadow ban my entire channel. You don't believe me? Go up there in the search bar right now and type in the hands-on channel and find out how many words you have to type in before you can even find my videos or my content. I have gone on to other computers that aren't connected to my account and, you know, like guest accounts and stuff like this. I've gone on and searched the exact title name that I've used for the video and they won't show it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that I must be over the target and that's why I'm receiving the most flack right now. So guys. I don't want to go on and on too long, but these are the things that are going on in my mind. As you can see around me, I mean, at my heart, the, the thing I'm most passionate about, you know, other than fighting against the new world order and saving the United States from the communists, the thing I'm most passionate about in my normal life is mechanical work. So I've got tons of projects. I'm thinking about pulling that Kawasaki, my wife's Kawasaki. It's a little uh, 550, 1980 550 KZ Kawasaki and I've only ridden it once. She's never ridden it. I rode it up and down the road a couple of times and it was leaking gas so badly that I was worried I was gonna burn it down, you know, and catch it on fire. So I pulled the tank off and set it over there and that was like six months ago. I have been so hammered with water leaks in my house and uh, my wife's car just suddenly bursting an oil line a couple of weeks ago and working on this little project car and just keeping my stuff going. I've been so hammered with all these projects that I haven't been able to get back to it, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I've got some more projects coming up on this little uh, car that I bought to flip. Uh, what is it? It's a Mazda 3, uh, 2005 Mazda 3. I'm going to be putting CV joints and struts and shocks and uh, pretty much every part that could wear suspension wise on that car. Uh, the person we bought it from, let's just say she got her money's worth out of it. You know, it was a college girl and, you know, college kids aren't known for keeping up with the maintenance. So that's why I picked the car up so cheap. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to fix it up. And if it turns into a really good, reliable car that I want to keep around, uh, we might keep it around just in case gas hits seven bucks a gallon this, this summer, because I think that's, uh, that's highly likely. Uh, unfortunately, I hate to say that, man, because uh, we're all being pushed right now. When you go to the grocery store, you go to the parts store to buy parts to work on your projects or whatever. I mean, I about fell over earlier. They wanted $5 for one spark plug. I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, uh, they claim inflation's only like uh, 5 to 9% or something like that. But no, 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 no. 
I don't know what world they're living on or what metric they're using to judge that, but they're way off, way off. In some cases, it's 110% more than it was a couple of two or three years ago. So I know we're all struggling with that sort of stuff, but uh, that's why I bought that car to flip. I thought, hey, you know, I can put my me mechanical skills to the test. I can get this car fixed up, even though I really don't like working on Japanese, you know, modern vehicles. I don't, I don't like to work on modern vehicles, period. I like to work on older stuff because I just, it's comfortable. I like it. And I don't have a bunch of sensors and bull crap and computers and crap that can mess it up. I like uh, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. That's the name of the game. You know, a V8 engine, rear wheel drive, that's the perfect combination. You start putting the engine in sideways and putting sensors all over the place and, and you kind of lose me. But I'm willing to do it this time to make some side money because, again, uh, I work in the oil field. I've had a business that I started back in 2010, okay? I don't want to give up and close my business. I want to try to keep going and maybe, just maybe, if Trump gets into the office, somehow through some miracle, uh, Biden doesn't cheat to the high heavens and like they did in 2020. Uh, of course, again, I, you know, I just don't see too many things, too many bright spots in our future. But if somehow, some way Trump wins, and they turn the oil taps back on and we become energy independent here in the United States once again, then I'm going to be in a really good spot to come in and, you know, do all the stuff that I do in the oil field. But if that doesn't happen, then uh, I'm going to have to come up with something else. I'm going to have to close my business, which is, you know, it just hurts me to even say that. So yeah, I've had a lot of heavy stuff on my mind here lately, but I need to get back into doing projects because, you know, when you can, there's just something about it. When you can look at a 350 Chevrolet and it's running a little rough and you know exactly what to do. And when you do that thing, it actually works and it fixes it. It just makes you feel good. And you, you know, it's just a, it's a comforting thing and it makes me feel a lot better after I complete these projects. So we've got so many coming up. I'm gonna be working on my wife's KZ, uh, another big project I've got going that's probably gonna be three or four months into the future. Uh, that white Chevrolet pickup truck. I, I bought an 81 or 82 model long bed Chevrolet pickup truck, regular cab, uh, V8, but it's got an engine that's knocking. I think, I think the engine's knocking. The only reason I haven't pulled the engine out yet is there is a, you know, a very small chance that it could actually be the flex, uh, <clears throat> there's a very small chance that it could actually be the flex plate that's cracked. Sometimes they'll make a very similar noise to a, a bad rod or something like that, or a bad rod bearing. And I don't know which it is. The engine was rebuilt uh, before I got it, so I'm hoping and also the transmission was in and out. They had rebuilt the transmission at another point. I'm hoping that it has some sort of a crack in it in the flywheel and that's all I'm hearing. And that would be great because that'd mean I don't have to pull that engine out. But if I do, I have three 350s back here uh, under my new rack that I made over here. Uh, you can't see it on this camera, but I've got another one. I did a video about making this pallet rack over here, but it was so good. It was such a hit that I had to make a second one over here behind me. And I've got three uh, Chevrolet 350s. One's a Vortec and two are old school blocks over there under that pallet rack and so many other projects coming up. So guys, Thank you so much for sticking with the channel. Uh, you know, again, I know I'm all over the place. I, I may not do the types of things that a lot of people like all the time, and that's fine. You don't have to like someone 100% of the time. That's fine. Maybe you're just here for the how-tos and the DIYs, and you, you don't care about my political opinions. Maybe you're only here for my political opinions. Either way, I thank you for showing up, for commenting down below, all of that stuff helps to break the algorithm, which is definitely against people like me. So that said, big, big thank you for all the subscribers, all the people that take time to comment. I can't thank you enough. Otherwise, I would have quit this a long time ago if it had not been for you guys. So uh, that's the best way I know how to say thank you. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, I stand for liberty to the bitter end. I hope you do too.